Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fourth in a seven part series by SCORE Fairfield County and our co sponsor, Fairfield County Community Foundation. If you've missed the prior webinar in the series, you can view the recording on Fairfield County SCORE's YouTube channel at any time. I'm Marianne Croce, the webinar coordinator and a volunteer here at SCORE Fairfield County and I'll be your host. For those of you familiar with our webinars, there is an important distinction with this series. We will have a mentor reach out to you after today. And we're hoping that you will take advantage of this opportunity to work with your mentor to develop a plan to help you grow, whether you are an existing business or looking to possibly launch a business in the future. You will benefit from a review session with a SCORE mentor. These are the topics to be covered every Wednesday for the next few weeks. If you miss any of them, you will be able to catch up by viewing these on our on-demand YouTube video, which will be available within a day or two after the original presentation. Today's webinar is entitled Networking Resources for Women and Minorities, presented by Diane Winston. More on Diane in just a moment. I'd like to share some brief information on SCORE. SCORE is part of the SBA and SCORE Fairfield County has over 130 volunteers with a wide range of industry, process and subject matter expertise. We offer three primary value added services to small business owners. First, free one-on-one -on -one counseling done either face-to-face, -face, by telephone, email, or video. And these can be accessed via the request mentor link on our website. Second is educational workshops and webinars. Over 150 are done each year. And third is our extensive resources on our website, including a network of subject matter experts at your disposal. SCORE puts on many webinars each month so look for future events at our webinar calendar at fairfieldcounty.score.org. So some information about today's event. If you have a question, please use the Q&A window at any time during the presentation. It's located in the lower part of your screen. Our webinar will end at 1 p.m. to respect your time. And this session is being recorded and a link to the recording will be available at fairfieldcounty.score.org within a couple of days. Now, our speaker. Diane Winston is a business strategist with over 25 years of corporate and consulting experience. She established her management consulting firm, Winston Strategic Partners, to provide communication strategies to organizations facing change. Before establishing the firm, Diane spent 20 years in executive positions with Citibank and AXA Equitable. She is also a volunteer with SCORE Fairfield County and a frequent workshop speaker. Welcome, Diane. It's all yours. Thank you. Can you all hear me? Yes. More important, can you see me? No, I can't see you. Can you see me now? Yes, you yes, can. I can. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, Marianne, for that introduction. Good afternoon, um, viewers. Uh, we are very, very excited to have you today. And I am especially happy to be um, your presenter for today's session on network networking resources for minorities and women. I have a lot of information to share, so let's get started. This is the plan. First, we're gonna, I'm gonna just ask a few questions and I want you to think about why networking is essential to your business. And then we're gonna look at some of the certifications that you can get as a minority or a woman at the national, state and third through, and also through third party um, uh, organizations or agencies. I'm gonna share with you the benefits of each. 
um, and, and how to get certified, and then making certifications work for you. I'm going to spend an, a little bit of time on certifications, but then I'm going to pivot and I'm going to discuss professional business organizations that support minorities and women. So here's the question. Why do we need to network? I know it sounds silly, but a lot of times when we move from being in corporate America and then we go out on our own, we're not so used to having to network in order to generate uh, income. So there are some pretty straightforward reasons for networking. One, you make business con connections. And you also can establish new relationships, not only with potential clients, but with colleagues. And that's something that we as small businesses, as entrepreneurs often overlook, particularly if you are pivoting from a corporate position where you've worked for someone else. Um, and they, what you did every day, somebody gave you directions on that. Uh, but now as a small business owner, it's up to us to generate that next revenue stream or to make that next sale. And the best way to do it is through networking. Now, networking to get clients is one thing, but we also should be networking so that we can build relationships with colleague firms, other small businesses. Let's face it, we're not gonna be able to compute, compete successfully with the huge corporations, but we can successfully compete with them if we collaborate, if we put our resources together. So it's important that when we network, we network not just looking for new clients, but that we are also looking for colleagues who have the same level of expertise. Maybe it's a different expertise, but they have the same level of professionalism. You would feel comfortable with them being in front of your clients. Um, you would, they, they have integrity. Um, what they are experts in their field, what they offer complements what you offer. And that's how I have stayed in business almost 16 years. You're looking at the one employee, but I have many, many, many colleagues that I've met over the years by participating in networking groups. The other reason the networking, networking is essential is because the more that you do it, the more that either your name or your firm's name will become essential. Now I know everybody knows about the 30 second um, elevator pitch, that's important, but it's when you build those relationships that it becomes even more essential for you because people will remember you. I can't tell you the number of times that I have gotten a phone call from a potential client or a colleague. And the question was simply, hey, can Winston Strategic Partners do this? They remembered me. They remembered conversations that we've had over the months, the years. And yes, sometimes it takes years to benefit from your networking experience. So patience is one of the things that is important. Networking also means you're, you can stay on top of industry trends. And that is very, very important. Again, I go back to my own um, history. Spending 20 odd years in corporate America, somebody else was doing the market research. Somebody else was telling me what was on first. Someone else was setting my priorities. But when you are driving your own company, when you're leading your own firm, it is important that you understand not just who your competitors are, but what are some of the industry trends? And we can gain that information by being members of industry organizations, uh, affiliations uh, in our specialty. I am a member of the International Association of Business Communicators. I am also a member of the Association of Change Management, Practic Change Management Practitioners. Well, no, I think it's managers. Association of Change Management Professionals. That's what it is. Why am I a member of those organizations? One, because the people who are also members are doing what I'm doing. It enables me to find collaborative relationships so that if I get too much on my plate, or maybe it's not exactly what I wanna do, 
I've got relationships with other small business owners, <clears throat> excuse me, and, and some large um, that I can turn the work over to or invite them in to be my subcontractors. Networking is how we can also increase our reach. And what do I mean by that? I can only be in one place at one time. Now, Zoom allows me to be in many more places than one today because I don't have to travel, but I'm still only in one place. And so when we network, particularly with uh, when people begin to understand what it is that we, we deliver or, or sell, when they understand who our prime clients are, our potential clients, when they understand a little bit about us, they feel comfortable representing us, you would not believe the number of people who will actually be like an extended sales team for you. So networking is essential. Now we can network, but now we're going to move into some of the things that, and I don't know what stage you're in in your business, so I wanna make sure that I take into account those who may be just considering starting their own business. You wanna register as a business entity in your state. I'm in Connecticut, so I, regist I registered my company back in 2005 um, with the state of Connecticut. We are a legal LLC business entity. I then went to the federal government and I got my federal employer identification number. That's also important and I'll tell you why in a few moments. As you're networking, begin to think about industry, functional and trade organizations that you might want to investigate. Where do your clients go? Where might you find like-minded colleagues? And then decide, your time is important. We cannot spend 100% of our time networking, although the demands would certainly require that of us. But if you do a little research, look at the industry, look at the functional um, organizations like SHRM is for HR managers, Society of HR Managers. That's a great organization if you are trying to sell to HR or if you are an HR professional. And then there are trade organizations. If you are focused on a particular trade, then you want to think about being um, active in one of, of in a trade organization. Think about the business networking that you want to do. I in particular like to go to business events where they are also offering matchmaking opportunities with potential clients or um, collaborations. So I just attended one last week and it was a subprime prime. So I would be considered a subprime or a tier two supplier to the government's prime vendor. So it was a government sponsored, federal government sponsored event. It was all online. I'd been invited because I tend to go to a lot of, of these types of events. And I was invited to go to this particular event and they match make, mat, and I was matched with one of the federal governments, actually three of the federal government's prime contractors. For me to deliver my services to the, to the government by way of that prime. So I have figured out over the years that one, it's important to get out, to let people know that my company is there, but then to begin to cherry pick where I wanna spend my networking time. I wanna spend time with uh, colleagues that are in my line of work, hence the International Association of Business Communicators, hence the Association of Change Management Professionals. But I also want to spend time with people like myself, and that's what today's webinar is focused on. Um, minorities and women, um, small business owners. Once you've done a little bit of homework, you've looked around at some of the industries, you've looked at um, the functionals, you've decided maybe I will test out going to this event or that event, then determine which certifications are right for you. 
And I'm going to spend some time talking about certifications because whether you're looking at, if you're looking at um, government contracts, they want one type of certification. If you're looking at um, corporate contracts, they're looking for a slightly different certification. So at the end of the day, don't just go out and get everything and do everything and be a member of every organization. You don't have time. We want to make money. And so this has to be a strategic um, um, opportunity for you. You're going to go to, op to organizations that are within your target market, where your clients might be buying, where your colleagues, colleagues might be selling, where you have an opportunity to hear panelists that are talking about industry trends. Very important. You will network, you will make contacts. But then you want to figure out if you know, if you don't, you want to figure out who, do, who are your clients. I happen to want a mixture. I want to diversify. I want corporate clients and I want federal government clients. And I'll discuss that with you a little bit later. And then, of course, because SCORE is the, one of the sponsors of today's program, I do want to suggest if you do not have a SCORE mentor, when contacted, by all means, please take advantage of it. It's free. I have a SCORE mentor. I've had one since the second year I've been in business. I cannot tell you how invaluable their input has been in helping me to navigate un uncharted territory. Now let's look at some of the certifications. You can get certified through the federal government, through the state government, and then through third party agencies. Today, we're gonna to look at some of the certifications available to you as minorities and as women through the Small Business Administration. We're also going to look at certifications that are at cert a certification that's available through our Connecticut Department of Administrative Services, as well as the Connecticut Department of Transportation. Now, if you are not in Connecticut, believe me, the, there are similar certifications in your local state. But you don't have to be a member uh, or a resident of Connecticut. You don't have to be a business entity that was um, incorporated in this state, nor for those of us are, that are in Connecticut, are we restricted from getting a MWBE certification in a state in which we don't, um, which we are not found, which we did not find or, or found our companies, okay? And then finally, we're gonna look at third-party certifications, the National Minority Supplier Development Council and the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. Mm -hmm. So first let's look at third-party because that's gonna be a shorter run. As a minority, these are the eligibility criteria that are required. If you are a minority, you are a minority, a minority in an ethnic group. You're Asian American, Asian Pacific, Black, Hispanic, or Native American. You must also own. You must also um, be the um, in the own fifty percent and operate fifty percent of your business. And now the reason that this is important is because many many times before we had these eligibility criteria, um, there were some folks that decided, for instance, they're not a minority, but they would put a minority in the front as the, the um, head of the company, but indeed it was a non-minority owner and person who was operating it. Understand that the NMSDC and WBENC, which we'll discuss in a moment, are very, very thorough and their screening to make sure there's not you're not being um, or that the company is not being misrepresented, and this is this helps me as a woman-owned business and a minority-owned business because when I got my certifications through the NMSDC and WEBEC, when I then went to corporations and that's who wants these these certifications, by the way. Um, when I went to corporations, well, the first thing they asked is whether or not I was certified as a minority and was I certified as a woman business enterprise. And I was, I was able to say yes on both counts. 
Government, on the other hand, is not looking for certifications from these third party agencies, but they are looking for it from government agencies, and I'll share that in a moment. The other third party certification that is appropriate for you today, if you are a woman, then you want to get your certification as a woman's business enterprise or a woman owned business through WEBEC, Women's Business Enterprise National Council. Both the NMSDC and WEBEC have regional affiliates all over the country. For example, I'm located in Connecticut. My regional affiliate is the Greater New England Minority Supplier Development Council. For WEBEC, my affiliate, my regional affiliate is the, Met, the WEBEC Metro New York, which is in New York City. And the reason for this is because the country is too big and we wanna be able to meet face-to-face -face or Zoom to Zoom with our potential clients and colleagues. And before the pandemic, I would go into New York or I would go up to um, somewhere in Connecticut and sometimes up to the Boston area um, for um, the NMSDC or Greater New England Minority Supplier Council to meet with corporate members. You see within each region, there are corporate members that support that regional affiliate. And I have been very successful in being able to attend these face-to-face -face networking meetings with potential clients, spend time getting to know them, letting them know who I am, showing up at their events, showing up at the organization events so that we see one another on a fairly frequent basis. And then people know who I am. Then they wanna know about my company. Then I get the phone call, does your firm do executive coaching? Yes, we do. In truth, I'm not a certified executive coach, but one of the colleagues in my network is and so I have been able to not only land a nice contract with a corporate client, but that I'm able to now support this um, colleague's firm and also generate revenue or profit for my own firm. All of this through networking. Now let's look at some of the certifications for us as minorities and women through the federal government. And all of the following are um, through the US Small Business Administration for the SBA. I start with our American, Native American owned small businesses. And there is a link on the screen, but don't worry. I have put together a two page list of not only these certifications, but also contacts for the, the um, different professional networking that will be given to you by SCORE as a participant of today, or they may put it up on the website. But all of the links that you're seeing here, all of the URLs, I've put together in a two page Word document for you so that you can go through this without having to scribble and scribble and scribble as I go through, okay? So there are criteria for all of these. When you go to the website on the SBA, um, uh, at the SBA's website, you will be able to determine what eligibility criteria um, you must have in order to be considered a Native American owned small business. We have two designations for women owned businesses. You can simply be a woman owned small business and there are NACS codes, N-A-I-C-S codes that are required for you to um, be within um, the WOSB. And then in terms of your personal wealth as a small business, economically disadvantaged WOSB, I believe the criteria is 11, and don't quote me on this because there are different designations that require different things, but I think your personal net worth cannot be more than $11 million. And so from that vantage point, I, I qualified as an EDWOSB. I not only have the um, asset qualifications, but I also have the NACS codes. And you can find out more details on that and how to get certified through the SBA, 
through the URL on the screen. Then we have our veterans. Our veterans, um, there is an organization, an office for veterans, as there is for women, as there is for um, Native Americans. And it is to salute and make small business opportunities available for our veterans. I see a lot of veteran owned businesses um, in the government space, which makes a lot of sense. They know the government much better than I do. And I've actually lost contract bids on contracts to veterans. And I go, no problem. I'll go after the next one. Then we have something called Hub Zone. And Hub Zone is um, slightly different in that. Um, if your office is located in a historically underutilized business zone, and where I live, I understand Norwalk is a hub zone, um, but you must also hire from within the hub zone. And because I don't have any employees, I don't qualify to be a hub zone certified. At least that's my understanding of it. But it's about not only creating opportunities for business within the hub zone, but also being able to create employment opportunities for residents within the hub zone. And as you see here, the federal, go the federal government does have um, a goal of awarding at least 3% of federal contract dollars to hub zone certified companies every year. And there are numbers, there are percentages and goals for the other um, certifications that I've also shared with you. I wanna spend just a moment on the um, 8A business development program. Um, my firm was certified, is certified as an 8A, an 8A business. This is a certification small business development program which is nine years long. And the reason for this certification and all the others that I've mentioned to date, because to, lo to, to, to level the playing field, the federal government said, we wanna set aside some of our bids. Either the primes have to award a percentage of the contracts they land with the federal government to minorities and or women or we want to make sure that we directly put bids in the hands of minorities and or women. Now, you don't need to be a minority or a woman to be a, um, an 8A firm. It is very challenging. You do need to have certain, like, it's like, it's a small business. So the criteria for small business defined by the SBA, $11 million and under. Uh, you must have a proven track record. Um, so if you're just starting out, I wouldn't recommend that you want to try to get your 8A certification. But every year I am required and my, my annual review is, is the, four, the 14th of this month, actually the fourth of this month. Every year I have to report not only how much revenue I've generated, but what percentage came from a federal contract and what came from a commercial or corporate contract. What the government is trying to do, and the reason that I went out for my 8A certification is because the federal government awards contracts that are generally one or two years with an optional two up to three or four years. And my goal is not to have to keep going after every year a different contract, where with the federal government, if I can land a contract, it might be two and a half years. It might be five years. And so the 8A program is a give me, it's a, a heads up and a step up for 8A certified firms to have an opportunity to bid on federal contracts where it is either gonna be competitively bid amongst other 8A firms, or it's going to be simply closed off so a single source where they are looking for a, an 8A firm and they will identify that firm and simply nominate you for the business. 
then what they do in that case is they talk with your regional um, um, SBA representative to qualify that you are ready and able to handle that account. So you see networking, federal contracts can be large and they can be very lucrative. And I mean seven digits. And if you can land one of those, the last thing that you wanna have happen is that you don't have the bandwidth to deliver it. And so you see, I have networking colleagues with subcontracting agreements between us, where if it is about leadership development training and it's for the federal government and it's, it's a large contract with many different people and classes, multiple classes over a period of time, I'm just one person. And while I'd love to, to pocket all of that revenue for just Diane Winston, why? When I can have a contract that might last four or five years and I can bring a colleague or two in on that and they can make money, I can make money, everybody's happy, but I've got that federal contract. Now, when you get that review, what they're, they, they wanna see is, did you, were you able to land any federal contracts? Which means networking 101 is important. And so, as I mentioned last week, I went to a government sponsored networking and matchmaking meeting. It's because I am trying to be in their view. And from those meetings, I stay in touch with contacts within the government, the contracting officer. And that's how I get invitations. Now let's look at a few certifications that are, that are available to you right here in the state. The Connecticut Department of Administrative Services offers an MWBE certification. It is, oh, I forgot to mention, the certifications with the uh, National Minority Supplier Development Council and WEBEC are, they, they do cost money. Those certifications are cost money. It's a little more the very first year. There's an administrative fee and then just a fee to be certified. And then every year you have to be recertified with them and you have to pay not as much, but you do pay an annual fee. That's important. So when you're networking and you're determining what your industry is, who your clients are going to be, then you make the decision about which certification is right for you. Those two happen to cost money. The others that are federal and state do not. So with the, with the Department of Administrative Services, you may get certified as a minority woman business enterprise, an MWBE. With the Department of Transportation, while it's a state certification, it does somehow hold a federal stance. Now, the reason I say that is because the Department of Transportation is a federal agency but each state has a department under the federal. And so under the Department of Transportation, you would secure what is called a DBE, a Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. And that's similar to the um, Economically Disadvantaged Woman-Owned Small Business, except neither the MW, well, neither, well, no. It simply does not require you to be a male or a female, it does not require you, the DBE, to be a um, minority or a non a minority, D just being a DBE. So these are two certifications available to you. The first one is strictly for minorities and women. The second one with the Department of Transportation is open to everyone that qualifies. And again, I have put together information so that you can do a little bit of research on your own about these two certifications. And we have in the state of Connecticut, and I, I did Connecticut, but I also looked at some of the national certifications. Um, we have certifications that are targeting minorities and women, and I've got the symbols up and I'm gonna try to remember all the symbols. The first one is the Native American small the Native American owned small business. This is an, or a national organization and um, it's 
managed by the Office of Native American Affairs. And there's a lot of information for you online um, at their URL, and that is provided in the two-page document that I have created for you. If you are a woman, the Small Business Administration, whoops, sorry, the National Minority Supplier Development Council, we've just discussed if you are a minority, and we've also discussed if you are a WEBEC or a woman, you can go to WEBEC. Then we have the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Now, that's at the national level, but we have Hispanic Chambers of Commerce here locally. I believe there's one in Stanford, there's one in Norwalk, I know there's one in Bridgeport, and there's probably a few others uh, scattered around the state. If you are Hispanic and you want to get that certification or you just want to network, then network. Network with other Hispanic-owned businesses. It makes simple sense. We have a National Black Chamber of Commerce as well, and we also have local Black Chambers of Commerce. I believe we have one in Stanford. There's so many organizations, I can't keep up with them. But you can always Google to see if there is indeed a, a, a I think it's the Southern Connecticut Black Chamber of Commerce. We have the Women's Business Development Council, which is headquartered in Stanford, Connecticut. And they are absolutely wonderful. They have helped me on so many occasions as I was trying to build my, my business and navigate my way. Um, and they became really important to me because as women, we don't like to borrow money and we don't know what to do when it comes to borrowing money. But I was able to go to the WBDC and they were able to guide me to um, uh, where I could get a line of credit for my operating expenses. So Thank you, WBDC. They happen to have an office here in um, Stanford for Lower Fairfield County. I believe they've got one in Shelton and I think they might even have one more north. And then locally out of New Haven, we have the Collaboration of Minority Women Professionals. This organization acts very much as a, almost a mastermind group, a mastermind group is a, a group, and it doesn't have to be these women, but a, a group of professional business people who come together on a regular basis for accountability. But I know that the collaboration of minority uh, women professionals, they get together early on Monday mornings. So for example, next Monday, there are some deliverables that I should have done. I made a commitment to do. And I am now being held accountable to do that through this organization. And why is this important? And again, networking, networking, networking. This is important because I work by myself every day. And it's easy to just pass deadlines. It's easy to say, I don't feel like doing this. But if I'm active in the collaboration of minority women professionals, then I'm gonna, my feet are going to be held to the fire every Monday. And this is a way for us to stay on, on track and to grow our businesses. And then we have the Black Business Alliance. And this, again, is an organization. It is not the accountability as, as, as much, although I know that some of the members do collaborate and they do hold each other accountable. But the Black Business Alliance actually brings together resources for us, they bring speakers, they do workshops, and they bring very valuable information to um, minority Black-owned businesses. Now, this is, this is a, an organization I found out about last year through networking. Someone who heard me on a panel with Webeck um, reached out to me, and, and uh, she and I, Nancy Ruzzo, we got together, and she told me about Fly Female Founders. And it's exactly what it says. It's for women who have founded their own companies. And like the Black Business Alliance, Nancy brings together, um, Nancy and the other co-founder bring together speakers to help us navigate. 
I went to a session that was sponsored by Fly Female Founders last week, and it was about trademarks and um, uh, trademarks. What is it, the other one? Registered trademarks and the other thing that we like to do when we have um, our, our uh, copyrights, copyrights and trademarks. Um, and that's important for me because a lot of what I do is copyrighted. I do training and I don't want anyone to pick up on my training. And I'm looking to also uh, trademark you know, my brand. I found out so much information going to something like that. That cost a few dollars. Some of these uh, local groups that I'm talking about may charge, but it's nominal to go to their workshops. It may be $25. Sometimes it's as high as 50, but normally it may be $25. And if it is expensive, it's because they need to pay the speaker and the speaker is bringing value to us. And then there's the um, Asian Pacific Islander American Chamber of Commerce or ACE. And I am sure that there are a number of um, American, um, Asian Pacific Islander American Chambers of Commerce in Connecticut as well as across the country. Find out about where yours might be and you can do some collaborations there. I'm a member of uh, Women Impacting Public Policy. I thought I'd put that out there for you business women, business owners. Um, we're the last ones to the game. And there are a lot of policies that are being made in Washington, DC, and I'm one who wants to know and so I joined WIP, and WIP, there is a membership fee for WIP. I joined WIP, and they are on the Hill, and they are um, pleading our case. They are fighting our battles as women business owners. So I wanted to put that one up there because the more voices that we have, the better off we are. And then there's also the Connecticut Women's Council. And these are women who are business owners. They're in academia. They are also in corporate America, and I was introduced to them. It's a wonderful caliber of women from all backgrounds. They're more senior and seasoned, and I love it. And they have many, many activities, and there is a membership fee for them. Okay. I'm getting ready to, ask, to take questions because we don't have a lot of time, but there's just a final word that I want to leave you with. Rome was not built in a day. And you don't need to have all the certifications that I'm going to share with you in, in writing or the ones that I've shared with you in the presentation today, nor do you have to join every organization that's out there. Take the time, figure out what's right for you. Take the time to figure out where you wanna take your business. What clients do you want to be in the same room with? What colleagues would help you broaden the services that you offer to your clients? For example, I do change management. I do change management communications. I can do that by myself. But when my client asked if I can do executive coaching, no, but we do leadership development training. We do group leadership development training, webinars, sem seminars, um, very similar to today because we're in a Zoom um, an environment, a pandemic environment. However, I didn't want to tell my client I couldn't do it. So it's still about change. It's change at the leadership development. It's change at the leadership side of the, of the house, executives. But I didn't, I didn't offer it, but the client came to me and asked. And you know how we are, <laughs> small businesses, you never tell them no, but if you're not ready, you don't want to be caught with your pants down, excuse the expression, but you don't want to be caught unprepared. You don't say yes just for yes. You stay yes and be prepared to deliver. And then network to exchange information. The one thing that I found that really warms people's hearts is when you're in a networking environment, you tell someone what you do, you ask them what they do, and maybe you can introduce them to someone that needs their services. I can't tell you how far that's gonna go. 
people will remember you for that. And then there's people who call me because they need information. And before we hang up, they'll say, is there anything that I can do for you? I'm one of those folks that believes information does not have value unless you share it. It's one thing for me to know everything, but if I see an opportunity in one of the databases and the feeds that we get um, from the federal government, the state government, um, uh, VidConnect, if I see when I'm looking for opportunities for Winston Strategic Partners, an opportunity for a colleague firm, I'm gonna tag that and I'm sending it over. And you know what happens? They're tagging opportunities and sending them over to me, which goes back to the point I made about having an expanded sales force. People are out there remembering you because you remembered them. So my final statement, I didn't get here on my own. I started my business, people were kind to me. I had a lot of referral business, but I didn't have the infrastructure because I started my company as a result of being downsized. I didn't plan for it, but I had enough of a network where people were recommending me for things. And then one day that dried up and I decided that I needed to really, if I'm gonna be in business, I really need to be in business. And so I went to SCORE and I'm a member of, um, of certain mastermind groups. And my point is, don't be afraid to ask for help to get the guidance that you need to be successful. But when you start on your way, remember there are people coming up behind you. Reach back, bring someone with you, mentor someone either, either formally as a SCORE mentor or just as informally as I do for a lot of people. I thank you and I'm now open, Marianne, to take questions. Well, thank you, Diane. Lots of great information. So we'll use the remaining time for Q&A. We'll take as many as possible up until 1 p.m. So please submit your questions at the lower portion of your screen. And as a reminder, a recording of this webinar is available within a couple of days on the fairfieldcounty.score.org website. And please register for upcoming webinars in the series. And remember that a mentor will reach out to you about your business. So please share with them whatever you, wherever you are in that process because a SCORE can help you succeed. So when we look at the questions, we have quite a few coming through. Okay. And one of the uh, first questions was referring to certifications of people were asking why specifically these. Um, you, you did answer in great detail on how those were necessary, but they also asked, do you recommend other uh, venues or ways to best, uh, best you know, quality networking? <sighs> Just start from the beginning. What is it that your company offers? I started out as a communication strategist, Winston Strategic Partners, we do communications, we do change communications. So I started out looking at organizations that were doing just that. And so I mentioned too, the International Association of Business Communicators, the other Association of Change Management Professionals. Just going there and hearing what's going on, I was able to network and meet colleagues who could share information or contracts with me. But it really, you have to start by looking at who you are, what you're offering, and who your target clients are. Okay. If you are looking at corporations and you are a minority or you're a woman-owned business, they're going to ask you, do you have your NMSDC or WEBEC certification? They're going to ask you that because of the stringent screening that those two organizations do, you cannot come on as a, a diverse supplier and say, yes, I'm a woman. Clearly, can't you see I'm a woman? Or can't you see I'm a minority? That's not enough because I could be just a front to a non-minority or to a male-run firm, OK? 
Okay, so those two, I would suggest you consider those, but when it comes to networking with professional organizations and meeting colleagues within your um, trade or your functional area, I say look clearly, look closely at organizations where they will be and potential clients. Okay, we have another uh, question about certification applying to other types of industries, people that are in creative, more like uh, art designers. I don't know about um, certifications for creatives. I really don't. But I would suggest that you join an organization of like-minded people. And what you might find is that there is a certification. I had no idea that there was a certification as a business communicator. I didn't find that out until I joined IABC. So there may well be something. Now, I must also say that my clients don't know what that certification is. So if I put it next to my name, after my name, ABC, um, I just say I'm a certified, you know, um, a, bus um, a business communicator. That's not what the acronym stands for. But it, make, it says that I reached a certain level, uh, a certain standard and level um, that my colleagues thought warranted for me to be, get that certification. So I could explain that to clients. Another question is uh, about services like insurance. Are, are they eligible for these types of things? And I think this would apply maybe to other industries that are highly regulated. Yes, and um, I, I know that there is a, an, an um, there is an organization for, I think, Black insurance. There is one for Black accountants. Um, but again, I don't know for sure because it's not the world that I'm, I'm working in, but I have seen it. There are organizations that focus on that. Don't know if you're certified, but it's not so much you being certified within those organizations versus a federal certification of your minority status or your woman status woman-owned business status, but being a member of organizations of minorities or women in your function, um, I think is beneficial. I know it is beneficial because you can, the trade secrets, you can, you can share some of the challenges, how you got around those challenges, and also collaborate in order to bring a, a, a stronger team to bid on, on client contracts. A lot of clients are now asking, and on the federal side, they're asking to see on the teams that I bring in what the demographics of the team look like. They wanna know how many are minority, how many are women, how many are this, how many are that. And so um, diversity, equity, and inclusion is everywhere. And so by you networking to others within the, your work stream and being able to have right there relationships it's gonna fare you well. Another question is, how long does it usually take to get the WOB certification? The WOSB certification through the um, SBA is an online process. Um, you've gotta have all of your financials together because they wanna see that. They wanna also see your birth certificate or your driver's license. They want to ver verify you are who you say you are. And then it may take a month. It may take two months. Okay. And is it similar for some of the other certifications that you listed? Um, the 8A certification can take up to a half a year or more because it is very, 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 very uh, comprehensive. Very comprehensive. Um, the WEBEC and NMSDC, those can take anywhere from 60 to 90 days. Okay, we're getting lots of um, comments here. Applause, thank you so much. The information is so valuable. Uh, one thank question you. here is, I am Asian American and they're in e-commerce selling my own branded trademark registered vitamins, herbal teas, travel, accessories online. What are your thoughts for joining organizations and or to get the right um, certifications? 
I think if there is a certification for you as an Asian American owned business or an Asian owned business, um, I wouldn't know that. But I do know that if you go to the organizations that I've listed here, ACE, that um, you know, um, Asian Commerce, forgive me for the acronym, I don't wanna look down at my list, but um, they can tell you. And I think it's always a good idea to join organizations that are demographically similar to yourself because we need to be able to share information with each other and bring information back. So they will be able to tell you what's best and they'll also become an extended sales force for you. We work for each other. Mm -hmm. What is your recommendation to align resources, partnerships before your company were to win a contract? Always, absolutely do not wait. If I network with someone um, at a meeting or someone introduces me to someone and we have lunch, coffee, a Zoom meeting, and I think that there is an opportunity for us to collaborate, there doesn't have to be anything there right now. As a matter of fact, I don't want there to be any, any opportunity right now. It gives us time because I have a subcontracting agreement. It gives us time to review how we're going to work together by looking at my subcontracting agreement, talking about it and making sure it's all relevant. By the way, my subcontracting agreement has the words vice versa in it. So when I sign a subcontracting agreement with my colleagues, they know that I can be their subcontractor under the same terms, they're gonna be my subcontractor. And I like to get that out of the way so that if an opportunity shows up and I, I know I need someone who does this, this, and this, I already have the paperwork done. We've already agreed on that. The only thing we need to agree on is their fee. And that's negotiated for each engagement. Mm -hmm. So this is more along marketing. Um, in, in building your business, was there a specific social media platform or medium that helped with marketing your business, especially with government contracts and partnerships? I wish I could tell you yes, but the answer is no. And if you go and you look on my website, you'll see that my latest blog is from 2017. Being a one person shop, social media, and I, I'm getting ready to bring an internship in, an intern in to help me with the social media. I can't do it all. I cannot. So LinkedIn has been very, very good. Um, my LinkedIn profile. I have one for my business, but people tend to meet me and then they go to my LinkedIn profile. I try to keep that up to date and I'm getting ready to refresh it now. On my website, have a website, have a business card that is not at gmail.com. I cannot stress that enough. If you're out networking, have a business card that is D Winston at Winston Strategic Partners, not D Winston 70 at hotmail.com which is what I had when I started out. And a wonderful mentor of mine, before I even got my cards printed, said, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> so another question here, following up on the subcontracting team agreements, do we need to hire an attorney to draft it up or is there one general enough to use until um, a contract win? I would make the investment. I would make the investment. I had my, I had a lawyer do mine and he made it so comprehensive that, and it's grown over the years because it didn't have say protection of intellectual property because what I was doing at the time he drafted it, the first document, I wasn't, that wasn't, a, 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 didn't pose a, a problem for me. But when I collaborated with a firm that was using their content to present to my client then the question of intellectual property came up. But make the investment, get a lawyer, tell them what you want to do, and it will the, 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 just it will protect you in so many ways. And if you do a vice versa, then your con colleague will feel a little bit more comfortable about signing it because it doesn't sway in my favor. It sways in our favor. Well, that's all we have as far as time for questions. Lots of questions today. 
And on behalf of SCORE, I would like to thank all of you for attend attending today's SCORE live webinar. And the link to Diane's two-page document will be available on the SCORE website. So in closing, a big thank you to Diane Winston. Thank you. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. God bless. And I hope all of you just knock the roof off making money. <laughs>